Imagine you're seven years old, and you and your friends are about to play a game called hide and seek. I'm sure most of you, everybody here knows the game. And if you don't know that game, let's meet during break because you need a hug. <laughs> now, I'm going to pretend, I'm going to count to 10. Close my eyes, I count to 10 and you go hide. Sir, please don't hide, it's not literally. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ready or not, here I come. Now, what's interesting about that game is that I want to bring to your attention is the hider. There are three levels of hiders that I've sort of like placed place them in. Now, the first hider is usually your two to four year olds. This is the individual that has no experience. They're, this, they're just excited to play the game. They're very easy to find. You usually find them, if you're playing the game in the, in the house, you know very well that if they run into the room, they'll either be in the cupboard, under the bed, or in this case, next to the bed, halfway covered. That's an easy find. Now, what's interesting further about the level one is, their intellect level is that, when you find them, they still get excited that you found them. <laughs> now, let's parallel that to the job market. The ones that are out there looking for a job, and I'm also the business owner. Now, the first level, I would say employees, are that individuals are individuals that have a certain skill, but they don't know how to expose it. They also don't know how to um, make, it a, make it something worthwhile for themselves. These are usually people that's very, very easy to find. If you have a basic need, you know very well where to find them. You don't have to go further to find them. Now, usually, let's say for example, you want your front wall painted. Anywhere in Namibia, all you have to do is find out where there's a mega center you will find at least four to five individuals standing there with paint brushes saying, do you want paint? Paint! These are easy to find. You don't have to struggle to get them. You know very well if, for example, you need a, you are moving and you need extra hand, where do you go? Just go on this, drive your car, go on the street, and you find someone standing there and you say, listen, you know, there's a few bucks, so you want to do it? And they'll be able to take it. That's your level, your first level. Now your second level hider are the more experienced. They've done this before. These are your four to seven year old. They're excited about taking this role. You will find out that when they go hide, they'll go into the room. Instead of going into the cupboard, they'll be on top of the cupboard next to the luggage. So you have to put in a little effort to find them. In most cases, you find them sometimes, they're in, the, in this rubble full of um, playful material. And they'll be in there, so you'll have to sort of like sneak to get to them. Eventually you find them. It's a worthwhile search. Because when you do find them, they will be like, ah, there you are. And they will say, how did you find me? Duh. Now, let's again parallel that to the job market. Now, your second level individuals are usually the individuals that have, they went to school, they have a high school certificate, they have a diploma from a university, or they have a degree. What they do is to put themselves out. They take time to prepare a CV. And once the CV is prepared, what do they do? They wait for a vacancy ad. These are the individuals that will buy newspapers that are on the job search on social media. So everything comes up, it pops up, and they apply. They, they have copies of their CVs everywhere, and they, and they just spread it out. For the job owners to find them, all they have to do is place an ad. And you will find a lot of them coming. You have a lot of CVs of which you then choose the one that you want, you go through an interview, then eventually you find them. What's interesting about the second level is that once they get the job, they are most likely to be in a company where they do almost the same thing. You find them in a call center, for example. 
where there's a lot of them in a call center where it might be that they have different functions, but the fact is they are in the call center. What's other interesting is that when they are in the call center, when they're in this job market, they will then develop themselves. They try and develop their skills, their abilities, so they can move further from there. So the second level, again, is about finding them is worth it. You feel like, I've, okay, I've done something to get this, but there's a, there's a process, there's a renowned process that you need to get to get to them. Now, the last level founder, Haida, sorry, is the, the third level is usually the seven to 10 year olds. These are the experienced. These are the most sophisticated individuals, young kids. They know very well when they go hide, you will not find them. They use extreme measures. These are the kind that will go into the bathtub, put water and put uh, little balls, take a straw and go under. <laughs> These are the individuals that will, you will walk by them as if it's a branch, only to see that they're actually hiding because they blend in. The further extreme is, they become like Rambo. Rambo too, Where he blends himself in into the mud. Even myself as, 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 as the person that was watching the movie, didn't notice it was Rambo until he opened up his eyes. These are your level three fighters. Now, let's parallel that to the job market. The third level employees are the most, not only strategic, but they are the expert. These are the ones, if you need an ear doctor, you don't go to a general practitioner. You search for them and say, I'm looking for an ear doctor. These are the individuals that are consultant, for example. These are the ones that, for example, when you send them an email, say, hey, I heard that you, you, you train people on customer service. Can you please send me a quote? And they will say, hold up. I acknowledge receipt of your email. However, can I have an interview? Can I have an, 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 an sorry, a meeting with you so I can assess exactly what the problem is? So basically what they do is they tailor make your quote based on the need of customer service that you, the customer service training that you need. Now, they make the search worth finding because once you find them, they will even ask you, how did you know about us? Don't you hate that question? <laughs> like, am I supposed to find it difficult to find you? They will ask you such a question because they are surprised that you found them. And then when you do find them as the seeker, you are also excited because, oh, wow, I found the right person. These are solution driven. Now, what's interesting is that besides the, 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 the the hider, then there's the seeker. Let's take, for instance, in, in this instance of this talk, that the seeker is a professional. It's somebody that has a problem. They need a solution. So the seeker, most of the time, is that they seek for them to win. It's not necessarily because they want you to win and they want to make you feel like, oh, hey, I found you. They want to win. They want to persevere. They want their company to grow. Now, here's the thing that most seekers do as a problem. You find sometimes a seeker who's an employee who hires a level two employee for a level one job. That's very common. So what happens then? From a business perspective, you get an, your cost of overhead goes up because you're paying more for a simple job. From an individual perspective, the employee, they become bored. Fatigue starts happening. They spend more time preparing their CV for their next role to get out. And so, and then vice versa. Sometimes you also find someone, for example, you say, you know, we're looking for a manager. We're looking for a manager to run my team. We're looking for a manager to love the operations. But you know what? There's a lady named Lucinda who's a consultant and has experience in working in, with managers. Let's approach her. However, Lucinda is a consultant. She might get the job, but she won't be there for long. 
which leads me to the question, so how then do you become a worthy find in the job market, or how do you become a, a worthy finder as the business owner? I'd like to leave you with really three tips. And I think the first one is passion. Put yourself first as the person in the job market. What is passion to you? We hear this word a lot. You must find your passion. But what is passion? Now, if you Google it, my best friend Google says, passion is highly linked to high level of skills and knowledge. And I would also further add that passion is linked to your interest. Now, in most cases, when you have a passion for something, you would want to be in it because you would do it without even being paid. Because you love it. It brings you joy. Now, and then, what's interesting is that in the new COVID, in this pandemic, at times you take whatever comes your way. And then you only realize later on that it's not my passion. So from an employer's perspective, from the business market, how do you identify that this person is, has the passion? And I would say that HR for interviews, I would say dedicate at least three to four questions just on passion. And one of the, thing, one of the questions that I would share with you is ask an employee, what is your skill? And what is your interest? Because this is always two different things. Because a lot of people, we chase interest rather than skills. We treat our skills as if it's, I'll always come back to it. But you follow your interest. Okay. The next one is expertise. Now, expertise is linked to experience. Experience is not necessarily the number of years that you've been in the company. Experience is how many times have you been in that, how many times within that period, how many times have you failed? How many times have you gotten up? Like Rocky, for example, sorry, I'm a fan of Sylvester Stallone. Like Rocky, where he gets punch, punch, when he goes down and he comes up, punch, punch, goes up and goes down. That, you become an, that, that becomes your experience and that becomes your expertise because you know, you, you can tell the, the job that you're doing from two falls, from a two-coin perspective. And also in expertise is that a lot of times we hire acquaintance over talent. And this is where we, this is what we figure, you know, and it happens, very common. For example, in a retail shop, let me say you work for, I don't want to mention names, but yeah, a retail shop, and then somebody just resigned. What do you do? You ask the next person. Do you have a cousin? <laughs> they say, yeah, I know someone. They call, they say, hey, brother, that <laughs> Jane. They get the job. So what happens? Because you don't invest in them, you, don't, you didn't really do due diligence to find out, is this talent? It becomes that you might find two falls in it. So this is why I say expertise is very important. Find out what is this person good at. You have someone in your organization that has been working for 10 years, doing the same job over and over years. Have you ever taken your consideration and just go there and ask them, what, are you, what, what is your interest? What is your skill? You find someone in accounting and say, you know what, I actually like people. Oh, okay. Yeah, I love HR. I'm even studying HR. Oh, really? Continue doing my books. <laughs> All right. So the next one, the last one is customer centricity. I think this one is more important because Namibia is known not to have good customer service. And one thing I would like to leave you about customer centricity is that you need to find that customers are not necessarily the external person that comes from outside to use your service or your product. Your customer, your number one customer is internal. Because if you are a waiter in a restaurant, your first customer that you should have a good relationship is the griller. You should have a relationship with the barman or bar lady. You should have a relationship with the receptionist. You should have a relationship with the, the cleaner. Because once your house 
you have that good relationship, you have that good customer service, and you understand the external person comes in here and says, hmm, this place is clean, man. Let's come back. The food is good. Because the relationship, because a lot of times when you say the customer is always right, we think of the external customer. But what if the person inside says, you know what? We don't have meat today. What do you mean we don't have meat today? We don't have meat today. So what do you do about it? Or do you walk in every morning and find out what is on stock, what is on special? So for you to be able to convey that information to the external customer when they come in, or do you go, can I please get a glass of water? Uh, just hold on, eh? Do you have water? No, okay. There's no water. <laughs> so in a nutshell, customer centricity, I think it's, we all have to be customer centric. And this is one area that I think even as we are around here, look at the people around you. Because a customer is not necessarily somebody that pays you. It's just somebody that needs service from you. So those are the three that I'll leave you with. Now, when you embrace the story that I just told you of hide and seek, you need to identify within yourself. Where do you see yourself? If you are somebody in the job market looking for a job, are you a worthy find? If you are a business owner and you have people, or you have a need or something, you have a need within the organization, are you a worthy finder? Thank you.